Alright, hello everyone. So let's work on some staff work for Kung Fu. So we're going to do a lot of basics, a lot of background material, a lot of uh, individual moves before we get to basic form one for staff. So staff one or basic staff. Um, starting off with grip. Um, we've got the alternating grip. Okay, alternating grip. And we've got the same side grip. Okay. Those are the two major grips we're going to be using uh, in this form and in, in one of the things you want to think about is a lot of times our vertical strikes are going to be alternating grip if they're going down. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, diagonal strikes are going to be the same side. Okay. And the interesting thing with this form is a lot of our strikes are going to be using the whole weapon length. So even if I had just done a strike over here, for example, I'm going to slide, reach, and step, pull, and strike. I'm still at one end of the staff. So a couple other ones. We have the horizontal kind of helicopter motion. So let's talk about that one here. Easiest way to think about that one is I'm going to be in the middle staff and it's going to be up between my peace sign. Okay. I'm going to go up and I'm going to push one hand forward, pull one hand back around my head to one side. And notice I'm now in the middle of the staff. It's just like the striking down. I'm in the middle of the staff and I get my finger pointed. So I come back the other way and other side. Other side. Other side, other side, other side. So we go up, rotate, down. Rotate up, down. Going up because you're missing your head. Now I'm going extra high, but you really don't need to do that. Training is probably a good habit. Rotate, up, strike down. If you're in real life, you just go right above your head. So, in application. So. Make sure you get around your head, and the other thing is you want to make sure it's rotating in a horizontal plane the whole time. It's really easy to get it discombobulated. And the other thing is, I'm going to use my waist and pull, and you can hear that slamming into my lat. Let's start with, to get the grip right and to get the feel right for the vertical strikes, let's start with the spin, because you're going to need to know that for um, the next form, and you'll be walking at the same time. So we just start the spin right now. You're going to hold the staff alternating grip right by your side here. And you're going to push down with the top hand. So the top hand is the one palm facing forward. You're going to push forward until the tip of the staff goes down. And once it goes down, you'll start twisting your body. And then you're going to let the staff roll around that thumb. Okay? So I'll go a little closer. Pushing down. Rolling. And around into the thumb. And so it changes your grip. And it seems like that'll be slow, but it's really not. It's really not. Okay? So push, rotate around that thumb into the palm and change grip. Push, twist, rotate around the thumb into the palm, change grip. Push, rotate around the thumb into the palm, change grip. So it's really just smooth transitions to all those motions and you're letting the weight of the staff do the work for you and, and the power you're putting into it is really not in the hand it's in the waist twist as I lean and twist my waist that's where I'm getting the power and the speed okay so normally you're moving with this one um, but not right now all right that sets up your motions for the downward strike so remember I said for this we're pushing and striking like that as we dip forward, that's similar to what's going to be happening when we do this vertical strike. So to do the vertical strike down, you're going to reach the end of the staff. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. The vertical strike, you can stay in the middle of the staff. Okay? So for us, we're doing this. Okay? So I dip it down, I change grip, I go down, and I pull and punch out that hand. And I'm going to point down that staff, and this one's going to be palm up in my armpit. So it's around, get ready to push down, change hands, pull and push. So it's double motion. You don't just push and you don't just pull. You do both to get maximum extension and maximum power. So down, around, strike. Down, around, strike. Down, around, pull, and strike. Okay? And we're going to be going forwards and backwards in that one. Another one is 
the diagonal strikes. So if we go upwards or downwards diagonal, now we're gonna use the same side grip. So for this, let's start in one position. So one of my hands will be by the waist. That'll be my rear hand. My lead hand's gonna be out here with the elbow down, with the palm facing down. So they're both palm down, I'm at one end of the staff. I pull the staff back and I reach forward. That gets you almost to the end, okay? Whether I'm going backwards or forward, it doesn't matter. So let's just say I'm not moving right now. So I'm going to pull this down to my waist and punch this arm out. Pull this down to my waist, punch out. Slide, pull this down to my waist, punch out. Slide, pull this down, punch out. Slide, pull and punch. Slide, pull and punch. Slide, pull and punch. Okay, and the punch is like the punch you wouldn't do. But since you're braced on the other side, you've got a connection bar that's now connecting to your waist even though I'm doing this weird punch, okay? So again, slide, pull and punch. Slide, pull and punch. Slide, pull and punch. The upwards version is the same thing. Now I'm going to slide, pull and punch. Slide, pull, and I'm gonna do this like an uppercut as I pull this back to my waist. You'll notice there's a little J in the motion there. Even though this is a diagonal strike, there can be a J motion. So what'll happen is, when this slides out and you pull and strike, this can knock something aside and come back and strike. Okay, you're not gonna see that in most of your applications, but be aware that it's there. So it's upwards, this pulls back to your waist like you're rowing, and this becomes pushing upwards like this guy. Boom, and as you pivot your waist, you can come back. So you might knock something aside and come back and hit them. Even though, when you do it in the form, it's gonna look a lot like a, a diagonal strike up. And it will be, for when it's a block, it's a diagonal strike up. You can still make it block and then come back and hit, okay? It's just something to plan in your head. But that's a diagonal strike up, and we already did diagonal strikes down, okay? So we did vertical strikes down, we're staying in the middle of the staff, right? Vertical strikes down, we're staying in the middle of the staff. We did diagonal strikes down and down, and we're getting to the end of the staff, right? Or we're doing diagonal strikes up, okay? So. Those are your diagonal strikes. And then lastly, we've got a vertical strike upwards. So that's going to be now, again, not in the middle of the staff, that's gonna to be towards the end of the staff. So if I was gonna do the vertical strike upwards, I'm gonna do this uppercut push as I go forward or backwards. So if I go to a horse riding stance, I get underneath that, pull and strike, okay? Or I can go backwards, pull and strike. Go forwards, pull and strike, go forwards, Backwards, sorry, pull and strike. Go forward, pull and strike. Go forward, pull and strike, okay? So that's the upward vertical strike. And it's really just a, a very shallow angle. So that was the upward striking horse riding stance. There's also a downward striking horse riding stance. So it's going to be the opposite. I'm gonna slide and boom. So whenever I slide in the horse riding stance and I strike down, I'm pulling and striking, and I'm sliding into horse riding stance, okay? So you can do these in pairs. So if I slide forward and strike, or slide back, strike. Slide forward, slide back. That's the way I like to do it. You could do it the other way. You could slide forward and go upward and slide back and strike. That's fine too. So those horse riding stance vertical strikes, upwards and downwards, are sliding from one end of the staff to the other, and they are same side grip. So we did the two diagonal superior strikes, and we did vertical strikes downwards where we stayed in the middle of the staff, and we did vertical strikes in the horse riding stance where we're using the whole staff, or the whole staff upwards, okay? All right, so for blocks, simple block, we stay in the middle of the staff, but I'm going to keep the same side grip going, okay? So I can, going forwards, I can block, block, or I can go cat step back, Tank Sean stands back. Tank Sean stands back. Tank Sean stands back. Or forwards. Tank Sean stands. Tank Sean stands. Or Tank Sean. Or cat stance and cat stand. Or Tank Sean stands. So the high one's almost always going to be a Tank Sean stance because look, I get a nice good brace for that high strike. Uh, and cat stance for the low ones because it gets me lower to get that strike. All right. So putting it together, you can put some of those strikes and blocks together. 
So let's start with the vertical horse riding stance strikes and the basic block. So the vertical horse riding stance strikes, remember, are end of the staff, whether they're going upwards, upwards, or whether they're going downwards, okay, or downwards, right? They can go retreating, they can go advancing, okay? They can go advancing, advancing, they can go retreating. Okay, so those are those. Um, the blocks for them are, if it's a high block, you're going to do for the upwards downward ones, you're going to do this braced block like so. Okay, so tension stance, block it. Okay, for the low block, you're going to be in cat stance, whether you're going backwards or forwards. So if I was doing the high block here and I wanted to go forward, but so those pair. So when I'm doing this vertical strike upwards, that's when I should also be going, ooh, cat stance. And I'm going backwards because he was going upwards forward. If I'm going to go, if I'm going to go, upwards retreating then I would do going forward cat stance all right same thing when you pair this up for two-person work if I'm going a uh, vertical strike downwards horse riding then you're gonna be doing retreating high block okay so what can happen is you can go high low high low high low so if I'm gonna retreat it's gonna be high tank shot stance low cat stance high tank shot stance low cat stance or going forward high, low, high, low, all right? Notice I'm meeting the strike each time, okay? I'm not gonna just hold it and wait. Do not do that, high, low, make it go out, make it go out. Because just like in empty hand forms, guess what? Any of your blocks can be your strikes, right? Wham, okay? Wham, right at the throat, right at the leg, okay? Um, you know, where you're attacking, go into the leg. Oh, oh. So think about that as you're doing it. Um, and we already talked about the going forward, going backwards, and the vertical strikes, or shutting stance. For the diagonal strikes with the end of the stack, staff, it's really just they're pairing exactly opposite each other. So if, if I'm going forwards and down, you should be going backwards and up. Okay, if I'm going backwards and down, okay. Going backwards down, you should be going forwards and up. So remember, for upwards is a cat stance. Upwards is a cat stance. Upwards is a cat stance. Whether I'm going forward or backwards, okay. So these meet. So that diagonal going down meets that diagonal going up. And the stepping is to get the range. So one person goes forward, one person goes backwards. One person goes downwards, one person goes upwards. Same like the other two pairs. So we have the pair of the middle staff versus the horse riding stance, upwards and downwards vertical-ish strikes, uh, and then we have the diagonal strikes, pairing the downward in tank shan versus the upwards in cat, whether it's forwards or backwards, doesn't matter. So you could do these paired going back and forth, or one forward, one back, and then change attacks, one forward, one back, and again, each of these can be strikes or blocks. This could be a block, or this could be the strike. This could be the strike and strike again because remember I said that J, or it could just be a straight strike. Okay, or it could be a block. Woo, bam! And then I'm going to come forward. Okay, so always think about each of your blocks as strikes, strikes as blocks, blocks as throws, strikes as throws. Um, either one of those is releases if they grab. Think about all of those things every time you do it and feel how the connection of the waist goes and puts things together. So. Those two person um, back and forth with those blocks and strikes really helps illustrate that from at the most basic level. So the first time you do it, do your obvious blocks and strike. That's fine. Second time you do it, do the opposite. Okay? The person doing what was doing the one half of the motion that was normally considered strikes, have them do that same staff uh, half of the motion again, but then consider them as blocks. So you play with that, and then you start thinking about, like I said, how to make them throws or releases or or even locks um, to me this this motion here when we trap down that's a pseudo lock right it's a trap against the floor or a break against the floor um, so you got to start being a little creative with the power generation that you're learning with the staff form but lastly the other thing that we're doing with staff is that I have a giant lever arm for all my motions so I can see and feel what's working what's not with 
a magnifying glass. So a staff is really nice when you do the work. Um, if you're not moving right, it'll look weak. It'll feel weak. You'll feel off balance. Um, you want to feel dialed in for all of your staff work at every point along the way. Okay. So all these places where I was having trouble with my hip, it bothered me a lot. You probably saw. Maybe you didn't. I don't know. I saw it. It bothered me. So. It really does put a magnifying glass, so obviously I need to strengthen this leg some more because it's still coming back. Um, and I can use the staff work to help me make those connections and get better. Alright, so we have two types of spearing. We have two types of spearing. One is with the butt of the staff, and the other end is it with the long end of the staff. So, spearing is just going to be that. I'm going to spear with the butt of the staff. Okay? So it's just it's a quick motion from where you're at. You can also then spear from the butt, but you can extend it. So I can spear it, okay, like that. Um, if you're already at the end of the staff and you're spearing it, you can, you're just doing a poke, okay? Because I'm not changing my hand position. I'm here, poke. I could poke that way. Poke that way. I could poke that way. Those are both pokes, with the long end or the butt end, or long end now the long end again, okay? Long end, long end, long end, long end. Get your range, get your extension, that kind of good stuff. So we also have a couple blocks that are different. There's some pivoting blocks, there's some scooping and things like that, so let's talk about those. Um, if I'm over here, okay, and I've done almost a diagonal strike, horizontal to where I am and I pivot, that can be a block, a grab, a throw, all of those kinds of good things. But I did it all with my waist. One move was here, I pulled and brought across. Okay? So that's a block, pull, strike, grab. It's a little different. You also have these guys. So if I scoop and press, what I'm really doing is I'm pressing that staff to the ground, sliding up and hitting them. Okay? For the block part, it's just scoop and press. Okay, so we're here, scoop, and press. So you can imagine they come in with a staff at my leg, I catch it, I'm sliding up near their hands, slamming it into the ground, and that shocks their grip. If it gets loose, that's great. If it doesn't get loose, it doesn't matter. Pull them forward, and I strike. Okay, so that's in staff form number one, or basic staff. A lot of times what you see is people only talk about this block and the press. And they don't link it to the fact that that block and press, it's important to get it all together. So when you do that block and press, it's block and press and strike. So really what happens, this happens really fast, wham, wham into the ground and strike. So the strike can be with the back of the, with the back of the staff or with the tip. It depends on where you were. Um, it can also attack the hands that we're still holding on to their staff. So there's a lot of things going on there. Lastly, we have some uh, sideways blocks. So they're near the end of the form. They're strikes, they're blocks, they're sweeps. A lot of things you can do with them. But let me show you and make some, a couple comments about them. Um, so from this diagonal strike that I just did, I can slide and skip together and, so I've got a, a passing through step, uh, skip together and attack the feet, block low, there's a lot of things that, you're, that are happening there, okay? I can slide, I can do another strike again, and again, I can go here, boom, okay? So here, and strike, and boom, okay? So you see what's happening there is, while this is a strike, diagonal, I can wind up, strike here, or hook here, pull them in, right, and attack. Um, the other thing is, if you notice, this then can become more horizontal strike, so we have two horizontal things happening there, but don't forget what's happening with the butt. So again, starting from this first part, okay, if I want to keep my hands in the position they're at, I wind up, I'm pointing this butt at them. I can use that for things. I can slide in and strike. Okay? Slide in, strike, slide in, block, whatever. I can slide, strike again. So just don't forget about what's happening with the butt. 
Uh, then you got steel step motions, um, kind of a high block. So this, when I do this high block, I'm not going to show you in steel step because of my bad hip. But when I do this high block here, that is guiding and guarding and reacting. And this is providing a nice angle, kind of like a roof block in our knees. And then lastly, my arms are in vertical and straight out. So extend and extend. Okay? So even if I was in a steel step, let's pretend I'm going to get in one. There we go. Getting there. I am there. And then I'm going to scoop and slide in. Okay? So that's what's going to happen in the form. And hopefully I've talked you through everything else. Uh, if I've missed anything while I'm making the video, I'm going to go ahead and add notes so you can see what's going on uh, and happy to answer any questions. You should remember this form pretty easily, um, it's pretty basic, uh, but ask away if you have any questions. Alright, let's now get on to the form. Basic staff, bow one, staff one, whatever you want to call it. Remember, gun, gun is the term for staff in Chinese, so bow is just borrowed because everybody knows what a bow is. From the beginning, ready? the staff from the other direction. 